What's up guys, John John the Wise here and I got another cyberpunk video for you guys. This time we're going to be talking about the most powerful character, starting character, that you can make in Cyberpunk Red. Yeah, that's right. I'm finally making this kind of video. I think it's been long enough. The game's been out. We've all messed around with it. And I got this character straight from the horse's mouth. James Hutt is the one that told me about this character. And I can't wait to tell you guys about it. But before we get into that, make sure you guys join that Discord community. The link will be in the description below. It is a cyberpunk community just waiting for you to be a part of it. Make sure you guys follow me on social media at John John the Wise. Make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast, Tabletop Cyberpunk, where I talk about cyberpunk, of course. And please, if you would like to donate to this channel the best thing you can do is go to patreon.com slash john john the wise it is very helpful i really appreciate it and thank you to all my patrons and thank you to all my supporters that have been supporting me and this channel whether you're a patron or not all right now let's get straight into the video so basically with this video i wanted to give you guys a step-by-step -step description of what james hutt calls daddy shark this, uh, if you guys don't know, James is the type of player that likes to, I think in the in the terms that everybody calls it, is min-maxing or power gaming or whatever you want to call it. It's his way of having fun, and that's what he primarily loves doing, making combos and stuff like that. Everybody's gameplay is different, and I think that's a great way to play and a great way to have fun, and that's how we learned about this character. Apparently... He's told me, just to warn you guys, that he has a whole bunch of these types of characters in Cyberpunk Red, and this is just one of them. So let's get straight into the nitty gritty and let me tell you why this guy is so powerful. So a little while back, James played in one of my games that I hosted with other content creators. You can find it in the videos of my channel. And he played a medtech character. And when he first told me about a med tech, I, I didn't really understand exactly what he was trying to do, but he said it's a really, really powerful character. So the gist of the med tech and the philosophy behind this character is the med tech has no downside to taking drugs. If you look at the drug section in the core rulebook, you'll see that the drugs have a downside and they have the ability to make you addicted to the drugs. But if you take a look at the drugs that the med tech can make and administer, those have no downside to them. They are administered by a med tech and there's nothing that to get addicted to. So what that does is it ensures that the med tech character has access to specific buffs, specifically we're talking about boost here, and they can use it without any downside. The entire idea of this character, as well as the medical med tech boost stuff, is to give it the linear frame sigma. If you look at the Borgware section of Cyberware, the only requirements it has is you have to have a body of a six and grafted muscle and bone lace installed. After that, if you, you put the inner implanted linear frame sigma, your body becomes a 12. Now, why do we want our body to be a 12 other than to give us an ungodly amount of HP? But also we want to get our body to a 12 because we're going to be doing martial arts. Now, what's interesting about the martial arts is if you have a body of an 11 or higher, you're doing 4d6 damage at a rate of fire of 2. There's nothing else in the game that does 4d6 damage at a rate of fire of 2. And James has said in the past that anytime you do something like that, like increasing the rate of fire of a weapon, you're breaking the game in a way that can be exponentially really bad. Now, you had the cost was really high for you to get to here. You have to have a really high enough empathy so you don't reach cyberpsychosis. And it depends, rules as written, I believe if you're under a one, you're at zero, you're now cyber psycho. Maybe some game masters will let you play at an empathy one. I'm the type of game master that says you need to be an empathy two or you're too much of a liability to even be a part of the party. Whether you have cyber psychosis or not, you're too, far, you're too close to the brink. So you just add a little bit extra to your empathy and make sure that you can make these numbers. Now, you can easily sacrifice tech or some other or cool or some other skill to give yourself the, the amount of empathy you need for this cyberware. So looking at the MedTech's pharmaceuticals, we can see that rapid detox, when injected, 
the target who's affected by a drug or poison or intoxicant is immediately purged of the effects of that substance. That means primary or secondary effects. The secondary effects make you addicted to the drug. So basically, as a med tech, you can take any drug, and whether you are addicted to it or not, when combat is over, you can give yourself some rapid detox and purge yourself of the addiction. So you get boost, and you get stuff like blue glass, you get stuff like stim, which when in, injected, which this is a pharmaceutical, when injected a dose of stim, a target can ignore all penalties from being in the seriously wounded state for an hour. So if you have some negatives because you're in the seriously wounded, you've already used your speed heal, so you have almost nothing left, you can give yourself this little dose taking away all negatives and making sure that you keep your buddies alive because you're the one with the most health doing the most damage and you're a med tech of all things. So you can actually keep the entire party alive. You're the ultimate support. You're the ultimate assassin and you're the ultimate tank. So because of that, Daddy Shark is probably the most powerful character, starting character that you can make in Cyberpunk Red. I'm sorry to all the game masters out there. I know you're all cursing me for giving this information but as James said, there's so many other more powerful characters that you can make. So you know what? I'm just giving them one of many. I hope you guys have fun. Try to be cool out there. And we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Take care. Bye.